Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, today we're gonna continue our uh, Raspberry Pi home server series. And uh, after putting out another poll uh, on Monday, uh, I asked what you guys would be interested in taking a look at today. And uh, about 25% or 26%, whatever the majority was, uh, asked for Watchtower. And Watchtower, if you're not familiar with it, is an application that will monitor your, uh, your Docker instance and look for new uh, updates to your different applications and containers, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's what we're going to take a look at today is how to, uh, how to install uh, Watchtower and then also do some configuration on it uh, just to kind of deal with some of the new things that's happened with docker.com. So if we jump over to my desktop here, uh, here we can see that I've got, uh, we've got Pi-hole and Bitwarden, Nginx Proxy Manager, RPI Monitor, which we're going to touch on in just uh, a quick second, uh, Duplicati, uh, Nextcloud, uh, some databases for Nextcloud and Nginx Proxy Manager, uh, Cloudflare, uh, Dynamic DNS, as well, of, of course, as Portainer, which we have to have by default. So that's what we've got up and running right now. So we've got several uh, several different uh, applications or containers running, and periodically these are going to have updates. And uh, Watchtower is a great way to get notifications when those updates are available. But before we do that, I want to kind of go back just a second. Uh, recently, somebody asked uh, if I could uh, show how to install an, app, uh, an application or a container that would let us see the temperature of a RAS Raspberry Pi. We actually did that in the very first video uh, when we, or the, I guess it was the second video, third video, something. We already touched on this uh, real quickly when we uh, installed Docker and Portainer and did a little bit of overclocking. Uh, we actually installed RPI Monitor. And uh, let's see, I've actually, it's running on port 8888 which I've got running right here. Uh, here we can see the version, our uptime, uh, CPU usage, and then right here, uh, this, will, this will change depending on, oops, depending on the size of your screen. Let me bring that back up. Um, so it may look a little different, uh, again, depending on uh, what you're doing. Um, but uh, basically right here at the top center, uh, if you've got this full screen, you should see the temperature of your Raspberry Pi. Uh, below that, we've got memory as far as how much is, is available versus how much is being used, swap space, uh, our boot drive. Unfortunately, it won't show, or currently doesn't show uh, our external uh, two terabyte drive that we installed. Um, and, and there's not a lot of documentation for RPI monitor as far as how to uh, make those other drives show up. So I can't really help with that. Um, but uh, this is how we can take a look at our uh, CPU temperature uh, as well as uh, <clears throat> CPU usage and, and memory, that sort of thing. So <clears throat> with that out of the way, uh, what we want to do is take a look at Watchtower. Um, uh, originally, when we were when we looked at Watchtower months and months and months ago uh, on the x86 platform, uh, I just gave a uh, or showed you guys a command to run in SSH, and uh, it's not great. I know a lot of people like to use stacks rather than SSH. I think it's good to be familiar with both. Uh, but what I've gone ahead and done is actually created a stack here. Uh, from that script or that, that command. Uh, and this is what we're going to use today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy all of this, like so, just copy that. I'm gonna come over to Portainer. I'm gonna create, go over here to Stacks. I'm gonna add a new stack and I'm just gonna paste that in there. And of course we need to give this stack a name. Uh, so basic stuff here, uh, we're gonna talk about a lot of these environmental variables. Uh, basically all this stuff up here, Pretty standard stuff. You're gonna see that uh, in some form or another in basically all of your stacks. Uh, the one thing I will say is the volume here, uh, this is what it needs to run to do everything it needs to do. So don't change this. Don't try to move this, just leave this alone uh, as far as that volume is concerned. Now below that, we've got some environmental variables that we wanna to touch on just real quick. First one is time zone. Of course, I'm near Denver. So that's the one that I use for my reference point. Uh, Watchtower monitor only, we've got this set to true. Uh, basically, if you set this to false, it will automatically apply all of the updates for you. Now, um, I, I do this. I have it set to false. I let all the updates just run in the background. It's not a great idea, though. It, it, it's really not. Things can go wrong. Uh, there's just a lot of issues that can happen with automatic updates. Um, so use uh, set this to false at your own discretion. Uh, just know that uh, it will automatically update things if that is set to false. Now. Uh, this next one is uh, Watchtower Schedule. Uh, this is actually set in a, a five variable cron. Uh, typically cron is set to four. Uh, this one's set to five and I don't know why, uh, but I did some research on it and did some, I, I found some resources that said that it needed five variables here. I honestly don't know what the question mark is for. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comment section down below. Um, but basically the way I've got this set up is to, to check uh, at four o'clock every Thursday for updates. 
Now, the reason I did that, because by default, Watchtower will check every five minutes. Uh, the problem with that is that Docker, uh, hub.docker.com, docker.com, whatever, they have started rate limiting uh, as of recently. So you only get a certain amount of queries or pulls per day on your IP address. Um, and it's not very many. So uh, that's why I've got it set to just check once a week, four o'clock on Thursdays. Uh, it will do everything it needs to do at that point. Uh, of course, you can change that to whatever time on whatever day. Uh, but again, you are gonna run into issues if you tell it to check every day or multiple times a day. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, Watchtower cleanup true. Uh, so basically if we come down here, uh, I'll actually have this linked. These are all of the different uh, arguments or, or variables or whatever that you can have in here. Uh, and basically what we wanna do is take a look at cleanup right now. It says it removes old images after updating. So uh, what it'll do is if there's a new update, it'll download the new image. It will delete the old image after it deploys uh, the new version. So that way you don't have a lot of extra old images hanging out, taking up space on your hard drive. So uh, we do have that. Uh, set to true, we wanna go ahead and clean up all those old images just to make sure that we don't uh, take up unnecessary space on our drive. Uh, Watchtower notifications, uh, we've got this set to email. Uh, so basically the reason for that is uh, if you're only checking uh, once a week and you've got uh, uh, monitor set to false, if it's set to false and it's ju just checking, uh, you need to be notified that there are updates. And that's why this uh, Watchtower notifications equals email is there uh, because then we're going to uh, we're gonna use uh, basically all of the rest of these to set up our mail server configuration uh, so that it can log into a Gmail account and send you an email saying, hey, uh, you know, here, is, here are the updates that are available. You should go deal with these. Um, so you'd have your, your from email address, your to email address, like who's it gonna send from, who's going to receive it. Uh, you're gonna have your, your SMTP server. Now this doesn't have to be Gmail, uh, but this is just what I've got set up. Uh, you can use any SMTP email host. Uh, you'll just have to adjust, uh, you know, like the mail server and the email addresses, that sort of thing. Um, so below that, we've got our server password. That's going to be uh, the, 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 the password for the username to log into the email address. Pretty standard stuff there. Uh, your, your subject tag right here, uh, that's what will show up in the email uh, subject line. Uh, I've got it set to be pi server container updates. Um, of course, you can change that to whatever you want it to be so that it makes sense to you. Uh, below that, that's gonna be the, our username to log in to our email account. Uh, sometimes it's just a username. Sometimes it's an email address. It really depends on, uh, on what kind of email service provider you're using. And then below that, we've got our, our server port for Gmail, we're gonna use port 587. Again, if you use something other than Gmail, you may have to adjust that port. Uh, but basically that's it. That is Watchtower in a nutshell uh, with notifications turned on and only checking for updates once per week. Um, and then basically what we've got to do is come down here and click on deploy the stack. Now there's, I guess, one thing I should mention before we click on deploy the stack. If your, if your password for your email server, you know, is like one, two, three, uh, password 456, something basic like that. You can go ahead and enter this in here uh, as it looks just like that. However, if your password looks more like this, uh, just leave it set to password um, because it will throw an error um, because of the special characters in, uh, in the password. Uh, Portainer doesn't like it. I've tried wrapping it in, in quotes. It doesn't seem to work. Uh, if you've got a solution for that, definitely let me know that in the comments as well. Uh, but basically, if you've got, uh, you know, a password that looks all crazy like that with special characters and whatnot, just leave it as password and we'll go in and fix that in just a moment. So at this point, go ahead and click on deploy the stack and uh, then we can move on to our next steps. Okay, so we've gone ahead and deployed that. Here we can see Watchtower is up and running. Uh, but if we come in to uh, take a look at our logs, um, it's saying the username and password aren't accepted. And that's because my username and password is long and complicated as yours should be. So what we're gonna do is actually come back over here. Uh, we're gonna go to Watchtower and we're gonna click duplicate and edit right here. Uh, and then we'll scroll down a little bit. Uh, we'll click on environmental variables. And uh, then basically right here, uh, that's where you're going to put in your long complicated password. Uh, go ahead and just paste that in there. I'm gonna paste mine in. Oops, no, I'm not. I'm gonna go ahead and paste mine in. Of course, I'm gonna blur that out so you can't see it. But then uh, once we've got that, uh, then what we can do is click on deploy the container again and say replace. So that worked. So now what we can do 
Let's come over here like so. That looks good. So what I'll do in another window over here. And so basically, like if we look at the time on my computer is 9.37 right now. Uh, here is an email that I just received from the server. Uh, this uh, Pi server container updates, uh, watchtower updates. It, it kind of appends uh, all this stuff on there. Um, but you can see it just arrived uh, zero minutes ago and it says, hey, this is up and running. So that means you're good to go. Because it's only Wednesday and it's 9.30 in the morning, this isn't gonna run uh, for me until tomorrow at, at about four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so if you follow along and you do this as well, uh, yours is going to uh, run at four o'clock tomorrow as well, uh, based on your server's uh, time setup. Uh, and that should be based on your what you've set for Open Media Vault and your time zone there. So basically at this point, we're all set up and ready to go. Watchtower's running. Every Everything's good to go. Uh, so uh, again, right now, we're not gonna know if there are any updates. Uh, there, there is a way you could do that. You'd have to run uh, run the command uh, in, in SSH, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna hang out. We know it's working, we know it's running. Uh, everything there is good to go. But there's one thing I just kind of wanted to touch on just real briefly, and that's if uh, we come back over here to this RPI monitor and we take a look. Uh, here we can see we're still idling uh, at 600. It's not really doing much, even though there's stuff going on. Uh, there's applications running, everything uh, that we've installed so far is up and running without issue. Uh, so there it, it peaked, now we're at two, two gigahertz or 2000 megahertz. Um, so this way we can kind of keep an eye on things. Our temperatures are low, our memory is low. We're only using about 20% of our memory with all of this stuff going on. So I think this is a good indicator of how uh, powerful a Raspberry Pi is for uh, doing self-hosting, you know, home server kind of stuff uh, with what we've got up and running presently. Okay, so let's say you've got your uh, watchtower set to monitor only. You don't want it to do the automatic updates. You want to facilitate the updates for yourself. Uh, running the updates is actually pretty easy. Uh, from my experience, I've had some people argue with me. Uh, this is what I do and it's always worked. I've never had an issue. Uh, so this is what I'm going to show you how to do uh, the way I do it. So uh, let's say there is an update for Bitwarden and you get the notification in your email. And so you go ahead and uh, you open this up. All you've got to do in order to update it is click right here on recreate and then pull latest image and then click recreate. That's going to recreate the, the stack, the, the container, whatever you want to call it. It's going to recreate that with the exact same credentials and all of the same settings that you had when you deployed it originally. All it's going to do is pull the new image and replace the old image. So that's all you've got to do. Open up your, your container, click on recreate, pull latest image, click deploy, you're good to go. That's all there is to updating a, a container manually. With that being said, I wanna give a big shout out to Canikit for sending over the Raspberry Pi. Uh, again, I wanna give a big shout out to Argon40 for sending over the case we're using, Sabrent uh, for sending over the two terabyte drive as well as, as the enclosure. Uh, I wanna give a big shout out to them. Thank you all for making this video series possible by providing me with this hardware. Uh, again, I will have links to everything here uh, in the description down below. And of course, while you're down there, there will be a couple of options on how you can support the channel, uh, whether it's through coffee, like a one-time tip jar or through Patreon if you want to become a patron. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Uh, I see you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for helping me out month after month. I really do appreciate you. Uh, so if you guys aren't a patron, want to become a patron, there will be a link in the description down below where you can go ahead and check that out and uh, check out the different levels of patronage that are available currently. So I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, so with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.